The next section that we get to in the METAR is the time of our report. So it's folded up here and let's talk about how to read that part of the report. How it goes is day, day, and then hour, hour, and then minute, minute, and then we have a little Z to remind us that we are in UTC for our time. That's the time that the report was made or the time when a criteria for a speci was met or noted. So for this specific example, then the way I would read this METAR time would be and date. We have had this happen on the third of the month. So we have 03. And then we have 0156. So it was observed, made the report was made on the third of the month at 0156Z. And that is when this report was made. So you need to be able to read this for future exams. Anyway, it's always important to know how old a METAR is. I can maybe tell if the machine is not working, not updating properly by being able to read this. Notice it doesn't tell us anything about what month the observation was made, but it does give us the day, the hour, and the minute. So we do need to know that typically these come out around 53 to 56 minutes past the hour each hour. Next section is going to either say auto, or it might say nothing at all, or it might say this little C-O-R abbreviation. If it says auto, what that tells me is that there was no human oversight or intervention in the creation of that METAR. It was completely automated. It just did itself. If we have a speci, we may have a COR that's going to show up if it was on an automated speci, or sometimes a human is going to go ahead and make a correction to a METAR. So a machine took an observation and a METAR was issued, and then a human says, oh, there was a mistake in there, or I typed it in wrong. They are going to put COR in for that corrected METAR. And we can see an example of that actually right here. If we look down at this one again with the arrow showing, we see here a speci that's for Newark and we have that COR that's going on. That is, means a person was involved in making a correction to this METAR. Okay, so the next part of our report is going to have to do with wind. So here we have our wind group. So the way that I remember this, we have this weather report is typed out. It's typed out on a computer screen or typed out on my, on my phone screen. It's typed. So text weather is typed and that also means that our wind is in true. So that letter T always personally helps me remember if we have text weather that's typed out then the wind direction is given in degrees true, okay? So what we have here is the wind group. We have always three digits for the direction. It's given in 10 degree increments. So here we have 0, 1, 0. So I've got 0, 1, 0 degrees true. Always be clear about that. If you're unsure of what we're looking for on an answer bank and you can include true, include it because it's extra good information. So the wind is coming from 0, 1, 0 degrees 2. That means if I have my compass rows and we have north, east, west, and south, that means the wind is coming up from this direction, 0, 1, 0 degrees. It's blowing that way. It's referenced in degrees true. Okay, if you say to the wind, if you say to the tower, wind check, which pilots sometimes do, we say wind check, out loud, tower is going to read off the wind. What tower actually will give you the wind in if you say wind check is degrees magnetic because that's spoken wind and they're giving it to you magnetic because you're looking at a numbers on the end of the runway and that's referenced in degrees magnetic. But always remember on a typed METAR report or text weather report we have typed that means the degrees are given in true. So spoken wind is magnetic, text weather is degrees true. Okay, let's erase some of this garbage I've written all over the place. 
Then we have the speed given to us. So the speed is either two or three digits. Thankfully, usually the speed is only three digits. Uh, if there, if, or rather it's only two, right? It's been a long day. If, this, if the wind is three digits, hmm, there's probably a hurricane going on. So go back and watch the videos about hurricanes if you're wondering about the speed limits for hurricanes, right? But we have the wind speed average over a two minute period. So this is telling me that the wind here is coming from 0, 1, 0 degrees true. It's referenced in degrees true. It has been three knots averaged over the last two minutes. So if you see this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 KT, that tells me that it is completely calm, no motion of air detected at all. This 0000, zero, 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 zero is different than light and variable or variable. Okay, so this means there's calm, no movement of air, no motion of air has been detected at all. Always be aware of your METAR that wind is being given to you in true. Make sure you know that for future use. Now with wind, they look at the most recent 10 minute time period to see if there are any gusts going on. Gusts we're going to define as a rapid fluctuation in wind speed with a variation of 10 knots or more between peaks and lulls. I'll go over that again. So gusts are defined as rapid fluctuations in wind speed with a variation of 10 knots or more between peaks and lulls. And when we code the speed, we're going to code the maximum instantaneous wind speed. That's how they code this. So Here's what we have going on visually. Here is our gusting group. We have a speed of 12. Okay, so this is my two minutes average speed is 12 knots. And then we have a gust of 29. Okay, so it has recorded in the past 10 minutes, it has been recording and it found that there was a 29 knot gust of wind that was recorded. So the 12, the 12 knot part is from two minutes. The 29 knot gust part is looking at the last 10 minutes. And again, to be a gust, it needs to be 10 plus knots or greater. So rapid fluctuations in wind speed with variation of 10 knots or more between peaks and lulls. I've heard before uh, on Ada said something like two gusting five. Yeah, that's a mistake. There's no such thing as a five knot gust. That's not possible. So you need to know how these are divided up for future evaluation purposes. Know which part covers a 10 minute period, which is the two minute period, and what is a gust. Sometimes we get this type of information. So this is a little bit interesting. It's more in the western part of the United States. On a a graphic view of METARs. We will talk later about how to read these, so don't worry about this yet. But we see Mullen Pass. It looks just like any other airport right here if I look at it on my on my METAR view. Um, we do have some gust going on. We have wind 250 degrees true at 10, gusting 26 knots. Okay, don't worry about this next part. We're going to get to that later. But if you check this out, because this is actually not an airport, I'm going to take a look at my sectional chart. It's near Boise, Idaho, and you can see that actually it is an ASOS station and it's a, you can listen to it on 135.47, but it's not an airport. There's actually not an airport there at all. So remember thinking back to our wind when we talked about in the videos about wind with how we have sometimes a Venturi effect coming through a mountain pass with some wind that starts getting squeezed and rushed through that venturi and speeding up. I, as a pilot, want to know what the wind is doing in a mountain pass before I try flying through it in a light airplane. So out west, you will see these observation systems are occasionally found out in the middle of not an airport. There's no airport here, but we still have that information. So keep in mind, a METAR may or may not actually be at an airport. Another fun fact for your, for your next flying gig that you go to.